for the iPhone SDK, software development kit, something a lot of people have been waiting for, a lot of talk, postponements, everything. But the keynote was yesterday, roadmap to the iPhone and enterprises for the iPhone. So, the, I mean, the roadmap for the iPhone SDK and enterprise. Uh, and basically, I'm going to explain to you a huge overview. i got to go quick so I can hit the 10 minute limit. And, you know, I'll basically explain everything to you uh, that he stated in the keynote. It was released, I believe, Thursday, but on Fridays when they put it on the Apple website, I'll leave the link to the video. It's about an hour, 15 to 20 minutes. Uh, so, with that said, uh, let me go to my sh top of my show notes here and start off with they first released was the enterprises for the iPhones. They just talked about it. They didn't release a lot of stuff but betas. And really, uh, they just wanted to give you an overview of what's going to happen in the future and uh, stuff, release dates, stuff like that. So let me just jump right into it. Enterprises, businesses are starting more and more to integrate and use the iPhone. You know, a lot migrate to go to the iPhone. It's a great piece of technology, you know, and get the job done. And, you know, they're giving more reasons, more and more reasons why IT and stuff like that should get the iPhone. And with this enterprise and business update, you know, it's going to be great. Well, they made a deal with Microsoft. Yeah, Microsoft. But this is a good deal. It's on the Exchange server to be registered for the iPhone. So now when you go into your mail, you get, you have an option of Microsoft Exchange server. But what's this going to be able to do is push what a lot of people have been wanting to see. That's, that's email, push pushed email, push calendar, push addresses, uh, global address list, Wi-Fi tools, secure, enhanced security, remote wipe, uh, you know, device configuration, all that type of stuff. And um, uh, what do you, they want to basically, you know, put it in a nutshell. And when this exchange server, you're going to be able to do that. And basically, the most exchange servers run through. You send your thing, and then you goes to NOC or NOC, and goes to a message server, and the message server finally gets it to the exchange server. Well, Apple's going to cut that down for the iPhone. For the iPhone, it's going to go through from the iPhone to something called Active Cynic, go straight to the exchange server. So it's going to be one line of connection, fast, easy, reliable, and you get what's done right away, you know, just like that. And, you know, Active Cynic's great. It's just one line of connection, you know, it's really strong. It's going through one server. And you can do vice versa. You can go from the exchange server to the iPhone. So you can do it either way. Basically, what does this mean? For example, uh, first off, what they wanted, what they talked about, one was remote wipe. Let's say you get your phone stolen from the exchange server, your computer, or whatever. You can, you know, remotely wipe with, with the contents of the iPhone from your exchange server you hooked it up with. Easy as that. And you can, you know, you have all your settings and stuff to your exchange server. But let's say you have it's for a business. It's for a business phone, or you know, it, your business provides you the iPhone, and uh, you know, let's say that you have to get your contacts and stuff pushed through from your old whatever. Like let's say you had an old old uh, iPhone or an old phone, old contacts, or any of that sort. Uh, you want to migrate stuff from whatever or your Exchange server to your iPhone, your new iPhone. Well, now you can do that with uh, Exchange server. You can. Add what you want, and it'll automatically send it right like that with Active Cynic, right, right automatically, you know, actively, just like Active Cynic. You know, the name pretty much states it all. So basically, this will be able to push from the home server and vice versa, and it's going to be great for business people and enterprises. So that's what they wanted to release about the enterprise for the iPhone today, and I think that's going to be a huge hit. And not only that, uh, it's going to, you know, they're still working on more and more stuff like. Uh, Cisco IP's configuration the certificate uh, configuration for the iPhone stuff like that for more and more enterprise options so the exchange server will be a huge huge asset to uh, uh, the iPhones okay next up with the actual SDK overview that they gave uh, what's going to be included stuff like that so it's going to be still using the same API tools same as last time open open same SDK it's going to be using you know the OS 10 platform the iPhone OS, I should say, which is built on four layers, which is Coco, Media, uh, Core Services, and Core OS. Basically, Coco is the, uh, the interface of the iPhone and all that stuff. But now that you know, they had to integrate it for the iPhone and iPod Touch, so that Coco is a touch because iPhone and iPod Touch are built on a keyboard and mouse layout, just like you know, a trackpad would be or a mouse and keyboard would be on your desktop. But they had to integrate it to a touch feature, so they made it Coco Touch. Now you have your Coco Touch Media Core Services Core OS, 
and you know that's basically still going to stay the same. So your API will still be the same, but they're going to change a lot of stuff for apps and stuff like that in development. Basically, you'll be able to write your apps for the iPhone, and uh, just like you know, if you know about Google's Android development for the iPhone is more than welcomed, and you're going to be able to develop your uh, code on the Mac with Xcode. Xcode, you can you know develop your own application stuff like that, just like on uh, Android. It's I believe they use X. Um, they use Java for it all. That are going to be using Xcode, and uh, they talked about some stuff for applications like interface user, inter interface user, which basically allows the user to you know customize layouts, stuff like that. Sh you know, design a whole new layout for themselves. It, it brings customability to the phone. Instrument live, live connected via either you know connected to your Mac, you know whatever, or connected. I think it. Can, I'm not, I believe it can do it with the app. Run. Oh no no! I think it has to be live and connected to your uh, Mac. Let's say you're playing a game while you're connected. It can live, uh, lively uh, benchmark or test out not just gaming performance, actual performance that's coming from the app. Render it renders your app, sees what's happening, it gets all the statistics on it. So let's say you're playing a game and you want it to record your FPS. It you know graphs your FPS and tells you and everything. So it's called instrument. And that's gonna be a live uh, benchmark connection that it's, it's an app for app developing and, app, uh, and developers on the iPhone uh, instruments gonna be a huge thing because it's gonna be able to you know give you a whole bunch of benchmarks for your apps and stuff like that now they talk a little bit about accelerator accelerator it's either I'm pretty sure it's accelerator not accelerator I thought it was but anyways if I'm wrong sorry basically they got third-party uh, people like EA uh, Sega stuff like that to run uh, Make their own iPhone app in a in you know a certain period of time and see how they did, and Accelerator was a huge, uh, huge add-on to what they did because basically you know Accelerator, it's sensor kind of like a sensor type of thing within the iPhone. It's like a, you know it's it's great you know it's integrated with the touch on the iPhone. You know you've seen it with, you know an extra sketch when you shake it it's all gone. You know just like that. On the iPhone, let's say you're cropping a picture and you want to, you know, you messed up, you want to redo it all, shake it with the accelerator, and accelerator will reset the iPhone back to, you know, the normal state. I mean, like, if you're cropping a picture, it'll reset the picture to its normal state. It won't reset the iPhone. Sorry about that. But, uh, basically, they brought this to gaming. Instead of, you know, erasing or redoing, they brought it so it's your controller. There's no analog, so let's say you're moving around. Obviously, you're going to shoot with your touch integrated stuff, but how do you move left? Let's say this is the iPhone. You just move your iPhone left, and Accelerator senses that, and it moves your, you know, whatever game you're playing, and moves your objective or person left. So it's all controlled within the iPhone's Accelerator, which is basically the whole device itself as your controller. So that's pretty cool. Um, so the Accelerator is going to have a lot to do with this SDK, and uh, yeah, so look forward to that. Uh, like I said, I'll leave the video in the show notes if you want to check it out. It's like an hour, 15, 20 minutes. Next, they talked about AIM. AIM was, you know, they used iChat, and that's integrated with AIM. Now, AIM, or, you know, AOL's Instant Messenger, will be iPhone's new Instant Messenger. That's what they were talking about within the SDK. You can also check out CNET's news. They have it on uh, the whole iPhone keynote. But basically, they it's it's simple. It's elegant. He showed it off. It was really easy. I mean, like, not, you know, he showed it to the crowd and stuff. And it was really elegant. It's not, you know... It's great how they got it within the iPhone's, you know, screen. It's, uh, you know, if you're simple texting and stuff like that, it's really great. And simple instant messaging. Next, they and basically in the end they just stated stuff that they'll be releasing. They release they're releasing something called the App Store. Basically, you'll be able to sell and you know if you develop your own apps, sell or you know give free uh, applications through the App Store. That can be that'll be on iTunes and it'll also be added to all the iPhones free of charge. It'll be called the App Store, and uh, you know you can't say that Apple's trying to make more money because the developer gets a huge deal in this. They get seventy percent of the profit. There's no credit fees, no market fees, hosting, fee no hosting fees, and the you know you get your payment monthly. No charging fees for free apps. So if you want to develop a free app for everybody to use, you don't have to pay. Apple pays for it all, and the user who buys it doesn't have to pay because it's free, obviously. So it's a two, this, is a, this will be the 2.0 software update. They released the beta today on the website. The actual SDK will be released in late June. 
and everything I mentioned here is available on the iPod Touch in a whole different form because you know it's not a phone and it's going to cost for the update. So uh, they have developer programs that you can register on the site for $99 to run it on your Mac, Xcode and stuff like that to develop your own apps on iPhone and iPod Touch and you get free tech support and uh, well, a whole bunch of tech support and stuff like that and codes and etc. development. Now you can be a regular developer with a beta SDK and it's free of charge. You don't you won't have, you know, all those other features. But also, you know, backing up this program is kpcb.com with a hundred million dollar iFund. All for the iPhone. Uh, for example, Google used twenty four million dollars to start it all. The iPhone's a hundred million dollars. You guys, I don't even want it's gonna be great guys. So that's pretty much overview. I gotta go now, I'm about to hit the eleven minute limit. Guys, thanks for watching. Comment, rate, subscribe.